Okay, this is going to be a very quick video. Um, I was not in a big hurry to get started on another large-scale painting project after the last one, which took nearly seven months. Uh, this time I decided to scale it down considerably one figure. I wanted to test out the, uh, the apple barrel paints on a figure, and I chose, instead of a Tudor Fab Five figure, uh, this time we're, uh, we're testing on a, a B-Nut uh, figure, which, you know, these molds are all uh, modeled after the Fab Fives. They're just far more detailed. Uh, you know, you can see wrinkles there on the jersey and on the pants. You can see deep facial details, uh, much more defined borders between the, the neck and the jersey there. Uh, you can even see the individual fingers quite well on the front and the back. The feet are much more defined. Um, and uh, the uh, bases come pre-painted on these things, uh, which is nice. Uh, you can they've, they've got a nice gloss coat on them, so you can... Uh, you can hold these things by the base and not worry about, you know, rubbing paint off. Uh, uh, I think uh, Coach Wallace gave me this one and the other one here that I'm painting. But, you know, I, I got two of these, so I wanted to go ahead and, and experiment on one. Uh, using exclusively the Apple Barrel paints to see how those are going to go on. And, well, uh, grabbed the wrong figure. That's how similar they look already. Here's a early days yet on this figure, but... Here's what it's uh, going to look like. It's going to be another Pittsburgh Steelers linebacker or tackle. I don't know yet. I'll have to look at the uh, decals I have left over to see what will uh, what will work for this one. Um, already I can see I need a little more black paint right there. That's what this is for, too, for me. You just look this thing over and see. Uh, okay, yeah, definitely need some more paint down there. That's a hard spot to get to, um, as is around the arms. But that's true on the Tudor figures as well. Okay. Now, uh, very quickly, let me just take you through this. First of all, uh, here's the brush I'm using to paint this one right now. And as you can see, that's not a small brush at all. Uh, these figures simply lend themselves to, um, uh, well, there's a more defined border between each of the components of the uniform. I can see where the, uh, uh, where the uh, jersey ends and the pants begin. I can see where the jersey ends and the uh, arms begin. And yeah, these are modeled after the, uh, the older you know, football players whose jerseys hung down to their uh, elbows rather than tucked up beneath their shoulder pads. It's much easier to do it that way. Um, much more defined. Let me turn the uh, light off again here. You you can actually see this guy's face. And that's true for all the B-Nut figures. In fact, uh, you actually, when you buy a, a set of B-Nut figures, you get 12. You also get a quarterback figure. So it's the Fab Five set models plus a quarterback. And they look really good now. They do cost twice as much as a bag of unpainted Tudor figures. I think, the yeah, the B-Nuts retail for uh, $12 plus tax plus shipping, unless that's changed since the last time I've looked. Tudor sells these now as well. And, of course, the Tudor unpainted figures retail for $6 plus tax plus shipping. Um, but and this is one, and I, I know I'm always complaining about how expensive electric football stuff is, but in this case, I you know, you are getting double the quality out of these B-Nut figures. They are much more detailed. And uh, once painted up, they do look really, really good. Um, you know, I mean, you can see already some of the details on this thing. I'm going to have to use another coat of black will not be remiss on the jersey. I, I think I'm fine on the uh, tights down there. And uh, need a little more on the helmet as well. Um, so here's what I did, folks. Uh, instead of applying brush sealer, or I'm sorry, uh, primer, which is normally the first step when painting these figures, I wanted to test out just painting it white and using the white paint as a primer. And, uh, well, it's working pretty well. Um, I gave the uh, shoes a second coat. And uh, hopefully that holds up during the painting process. If not, I'll just paint it again one more time. Uh, I try not to grab these things by the feet, but it, it tends to happen, especially on some of the other poses like the linemen or the uh, sprinters or the runners where a foot is stuck back there and it's just too easy to use it to balance your instead of your hands while you're painting and you can rub paint off. But now as far as paints uh, goes, uh, you know, the white paint, Apple Barrel just has a generic white, okay? They do have other shades of white, but that works just fine. And uh, the, the Steelers, you know, the uh, jersey and the helmet and the tights, just use Apple Barrel black. And now yellow is a little more tricky. The, um, the gift set I showcased a couple of months ago, or last month, I think, actually, um, had two different hues of yellow, but neither were suitable for Pittsburgh Steelers' pants. 
However, uh, a couple weeks ago, I went to the Superstore and picked up uh, another uh, gift set of Apple Barrel Paints. Only 12 in this package, but it was only 5 bucks, And so that's less than 50 cents. Uh, essentially, you got two bottles free. And it came with uh, all the essential colors of the, uh, the rainbow, basically, plus, plus a few others. But that set included a color called King Gold, and that's what you see right here. I didn't have to mix and match anything to get this color, and that's pretty good match. It's a little darker than Tudor's Golden Yellow, which you might be able to see the little drop of King's Gold in the palette there on top of the Golden Yellow, but on top of this white paint. As you can see, that, that, that matches up. That's very, very close to the Pittsburgh Steelers yellow. Close enough for me, anyway. And we can compare this with a Tudor figure that I painted over a year ago. This is one of the very first I painted. And, and you can see here, I mean, it's a pretty good match. It might be just a little duller than the Tudor figure. I mean, if you really wanted to, to uh, brighten that up, just another a, a lighter color of yellow mixed in with one drop of a lighter yellow mixed in with that paint. But this is what we're going for, ultimately. Uh, it's, I, I, my, my goal is to make this one look much better than this one. You know, the, as long as your latest project is better than the previous one, that's what it's all about. And you know, this is several projects back, so I hope to do a much better job on this one. Um, I, I think, yeah, you can see that the uh, B-nut figure is a little beefier. I think it's a little larger. They do weigh practically the same. I can't tell any difference in weight here. Um, but there's no great advantage using these over the Tudor figures, I don't think. I mean, the stance is a little more upright than the uh, Tudor figure, but only slightly. And uh, you know, let's look at them from the both both angles there. Once we've got the face mask and and, and all the customization done to it, it's going. I hope it's going to look really good. It looks to now. Finally, uh, this particular flesh tone. Um, I didn't have anything like this in, in either of the gift sets. I, I was like, well, what am I going to have, what am I going to do? I mean, I've got plenty of Tudor paint, but I wanted to use uh, strictly Apple Barrel paints on this. And quite a surprise here. Uh, light Mocha, which, you know, I, I paid 50 cents for the 54 cents for this at the Superstore. Two ounces uh, of paint. That's four times as much as you get in a, in a bottle of Tudor paint. And it, let's turn the light off so you can see a little better. That's pretty close to the, the Tudor uh, Caucasian. It's pretty close, folks. And uh, I, I was surprised by that. I, I expected it to be a little more tan than this. But maybe, again, it's because I used white acrylic paint as a, uh, a primer. That might have something to do with it. But I think it's going to look good. Uh, obviously, there's no need to go through all this. I will, but... Uh, you've seen enough of these uh, tutorials to know what happens next. I'll uh, paint on some leg stripes with uh, a toothpick. I'll paint on a helmet stripe with a toothpick. I'll, uh, uh, now I'm going to do the uh, shoulder stripes a little different. Instead of trying to wrap it all the way around the uh, jersey, I'll probably just do the half circle, the, the hemisphere that the, the decals do themselves. And I should have enough clearance here to use the Sharpie marker to make three stripes rather than just two on these figure. Uh, I'll paint on a chin strap. I'll uh, probably paint on a little Steelers logo there on the jersey, like the, the last project. Obviously, I'll, I'll paint the uh, Steelers logo with the uh, just the uh, white acrylic and then a Sharpie marker for the, uh, uh, you know, the four little, the three dots and the line. And I've got some extra Tudor... Uh, uh, water slide decals from you know this very early project. I've got tons of those left, so we'll apply these to the uh, the, the numbers anyway to the uh, the jersey and the you know the front and the back and the shoulders. I might put that white collar between the helmet and the uh, jersey. Not necessary for this particular color scheme because it's the same color, but I might see what uh, what that looks like and see if I like it. And uh, I'll probably paint on a towel since I'm pretty good at doing that. As far as the shoes go, well, yeah, I can always put a swoosh on these. But I might also experiment with, if I can get to the front of the shoes with my Sharpie marker, I might experiment on trying to make shoelaces. Uh, and there's two different ways I've seen it done. One is just, you know, horizontal lines, three horizontal lines to simulate shoelaces straight across. Also, little X's 
to simulate shoelaces that are, you know, crisscrossed. Um, I don't know which would work better. Like I said, it probably is going to depend on how hard it is to get a Sharpie marker down in there to do some work. I could try to do it with a toothpick, but I can't imagine that I would be accurate enough. Um, I do have some smaller brushes that I could try to use on this, but uh, which is, like I said, this this brush is is working just fine so far. I haven't done any fine detail work yet, but um, this is a I, this is a brush I started using on the previous Steelers project with the uh, yellow jerseys. So, but that's uh this is the only figure I'm going to be painting for a while. I don't know how long it's going to take me to do it. I did all this in one day. So, you know, this could be another really quick project. I'm, not, I'm in no huge hurry on this. The next project, of course, is going to be uh, the Chicago Bears and then orange jerseys. Um, but that's just going to be, I'm going to use Fab Five figures for that, Tudor Fab Five figures. Now, um, I think around the holiday season, I might treat myself to a bag of B-Nut figures, uh, a set of 12, and I, I might make, finally make my Tennessee Volunteers squad out of those. Um, I think that would work really well. Even without helmet decals, I can, I can draw... The Tennessee T with um, with a, a Sharpie mark, and I have just the perfect color for it. So that's and I can, I th I'm thinking Indianapolis Colts home team decals, waterside decals, just white varsity numbers would work perfect on Tennessee Volunteers. So that's probably going to happen too. And then I'll have some decals for the uh, home team Indianapolis Colts, but and I'll just paint those. The horseshoe is easy. It's it's just as easy as painting the Chicago C. It's just you know, just flip it around with different colors. Okay, well, thank you so much for watching, and I hope this is uh, helpful for those of you who are looking for different figures other than Tudor Fab Five figures to paint. Uh, like I said, you know, the uh, the B-Nut figures cost twice as much as unpainted Fab Five figures, but I, I strongly do feel like you are getting twice the quality with a B-Nut figure. Okay, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.